to start off, let's start with the basics, okay? With what what is sensation? Sensation is the raw stimuli that's coming into our brains, telling us kind of, you know, what is the actual physical signal out there that we're, we're transducing in order to generate these perceptions. There are five well-known senses, you know, identified from classical times. Um, and then it turns out there's actually two additional senses that we really uh, can't distinguish on any principled ground from those other senses, except for the fact that we're not really totally consciously aware of them. So five of these senses are kind of accessible to consciousness. The extra two are not so accessible to consciousness, but they're really important. Vision, sight, uh, is the transduction of light. So it's translating photons fundamentally, if you believe the, the physics of uh, the physical description of light is photons or waves. It has this kind of dual nature, whatever. Um, uh, there are uh, cones and rods in your retina, little uh, kind of electrical systems that actually trap uh, those photons and turn them into electrical charges. So it's transducing or translating this physical stimulus of photons into something that then can activate neurons. And that's that fundamental process of kind of sensing, uh, turning the physical stimulus into a signal that can then go up into your brain and make other neurons fire. And those come in in the retina, and then the pathway from the retina goes from the lateral geniculate nucleus up to primary visual cortex, and then from there up in that hierarchy that we've talked about many times. Uh, the absolute threshold of this sensory system, uh, in other words, the, the thing that you can just barely see is amazing. It's a candle flame from about 30 miles away on a clear night. Okay, so the absolute threshold is amazingly uh, powerful. We actually, even though we like to talk about how great the senses are of other animals like wolves and bears, etc., um, we actually do have a pretty great uh, set of sensory inputs. Audition is transducing sound, which is changes in air pressure, uh, vibrations in the in the air pressure. Your hair cells in your inner ear, the cochlea, uh, uh, are kind of wiggling around as a result of these sounds. We'll see how those uh, get activated. And that then goes up from that peripheral uh, cochlea system into the medial geniculate nucleus into primary auditory cortex, or A1. And the absolute threshold there is a tick of a watch at 20 feet in a quiet room. So uh, some tiny little ticking sound. Uh, hard to really judge exactly subjectively, but that's that's pretty good. It's probably not anywhere near as good as a wolf, actually. Our vision is by far our best visual, our best sensory modality. Olfaction is uh, transducing, uh, detecting airborne molecules in the air that we're breathing. Uh, there's hair cells. It's always these hair cells for most of these things inside the olfactory epithelium up inside your nose, these little uh, layers of skin upside in your nose. Um, and interestingly, there is no thalamic area for uh, olfaction. It goes straight into olfactory cortex with no thalamus. Uh, so the, the absolute threshold is one drop of perfume diluted in uh, air in a room, in, in a six room house. So pretty powerful. Often you can be really sensitive to uh, small uh, concentrations of these molecules, especially if you don't like the perfume. <laughs> uh, taste, gustation, you're sensing food molecules as you're eating, of course. Um, there's these taste buds in the papillae of the tongue, and those go in from the ventral uh, nucleus uh, in the thalamus up into the insula and one teaspoon of sugar in two gallons of water. And this is something you can actually try pretty easily. I don't think you could really try out the, the candle at 30 miles experiment, uh, but you can try this. You can get two gallons of water and mix a uh, half a teaspoon and see if you can taste that and then keep going up until you can taste it. Uh, okay, touch somesthesis. Uh, and there's many different receptors for touch all over our skin, uh, light, touch, uh, pressure, uh, pain, temperature, all these different signals coming in. Uh, these are actually free nerve endings in the skin, uh, and they go through these different uh, nuclei up into primary sensory cortex S1, somatosensory cortex, sorry. 
Uh, and so whatever, a wing of a fly falling in your cheek from one centimeter. I don't think you want to try that. Um, okay, so these other two senses that we're not so aware of, uh, one of, is really uh, also very similar to the somatosthesis. It goes up into S1, and this is uh, called uh, kinesthesis, also uh, proprioception. It's this ability to know kind of where your hands and your arms and your body is in terms of how extended or compressed your muscles are. And so it turns out there's these little fibers in your muscles called muscle spindle fibers, and they detect kind of the extension of your uh, muscles, and that allows you to kind of determine where is your body. So you have a sense of where is your body in any given moment, what configuration is your body in, and that's coming from this proprioceptive sense. Um, and so we have that awareness, but it's not like, you know, something discrete. It's kind of always there. So like touch, we kind of, you know, I'm not being touched. I'm being touched. I can kind of have that sense of what the difference is. I have a sense that I can kind of feel my position of my body, but maybe I don't, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's kind of always there again. So we don't really notice it as much. We're not so consciously aware of that as a sense that we have. Finally, the last one is the vestibular sense. Okay, the sense of balance. And it turns out that there are special um, uh, mechanisms, these semicircular canals in our ears um, and these other kind of very heavy iron laden uh, um, uh, cells that have, they call these otoliths that are very sensitive to when our head moves. And so when you're doing this um, and rotating your head, you get a kind of sense of how your head is moving. And that is critical for our ability to balance. Um, so if you have a congested head, uh, your sense of balance can get off. You can feel dizzy. Um, there are disorders of these things that, that actually lead to vertigo and a sense of dizziness. Um, and again, these are things that are always there. So we're not so consciously aware of them being kind of there and not there. Um, but you can be kind of aware of, you know, you can feel your head move. Um, and that helps you, uh, again, do all these different motor actions. And both of these go into that primary somatosensory cortex. So that's a very common pathway for all three of these. So that's really uh, the main sense. There's actually some other ones that are even kind of less consciously aware that we could talk about, uh, but these are the main ones. Uh, and again, uh, if you're looking for items that will show up on tests, these are them. So this is a table you'll want to commit to memory.